I do not have any adjustments to the agenda. Does anyone else? I, I have one tiny one. Okay. Uh, that's uh, a student council. Um, Creating an elementary student council. Okay, so we'll call that discussion item 8.3. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's actually Wilder's idea. <laughs> totally his idea. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Um, all right. The consent agenda in your uh, packet, we have minutes from our meeting uh, in Rochester's uh, library last week. Last, last week, last month. Or last week, last, last month. month. Right. Last time. Right. Last time. Um, I think Jenny did a fine job, so I would entertain a motion to uh, move the minutes as submitted. Great. I shall move. Second? Second. Okay, uh, any discussion? Anyone see a typo? Uh, Something that's let's out, left out. Uh, I will commend uh, Jenny for uh, her Article 1.2, the attendance piece, and her appropriate use of, of uh, uh, commas and semicolons. Well done. <laughs> oh. Well, my mother was a high school English teacher, so I was raised by a grammarian, and the semicolons were like that even first. So nice to hear her. Uh, hearing no other discussion, uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes are submitted in the packet, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the minutes are approved uh, unanimously. Um, next, uh, reports, to the, uh, reports to the board. Um, Bruce's report will be given when Bruce arrives. He is uh, flying in from uh, North Carolina today and is theoretically uh, on the road, do you That's know where we landed? Purposely skip over board comment, or I have a uh, comment? Um, no, I didn't purposely skip over the list. I, I, I just went right to report to the board. I was thinking about talking about Bruce. Can I, I just, just the, the one thing, I started adjusting with your agenda, I think. It's only because I'm looking at it right now. Um, there's been, I'm just wondering if we should discuss some of these emails from Tim Pratt about the. Have you been in anybody else can read them? I have been. I have been. Um, it's about the quick claim and it has an issue about a lawsuit. And I don't know if we can wait till Bruce is here to ask about it. I'm just curious about it. Yeah, what we, what we probably should do is uh, you mentioned that and I realized that I had asked for there to be executive session on here. There is. There should be. And there is not. Any. So we're going to add executive session. Yeah. And I know that thing you guys. Six, five. No, uh, we'll call it item 10, where it says other. other. We'll just kind of scratch out the word Excellent. other, write in the word executive session, Thank you. and we we'll go from there. Thank you. I think that's something that we might want to have to specify that we should maybe discuss. We need to start having a conversation about equity, I think, in terms of different schools. We've had a couple different people come to us about you know, drivers that are being paid with this tuition and books and something that we might just want to. Mm -hmm. Talk about at some point. Sure, the vast. Oh, yeah, exactly. The vast discussion. You know about that email from that woman who, um, from someone who wants to put something in the newsletter about both the board. Yes, that is our uh, secretary. Um, Lisa Blur. Lisa yeah, Blur. Yeah. yeah. So we should decide what we want to. We send should. So add that, that to. Do you want to put that in the newsletter? Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. let's add that to the executive session. It's time to talk about the vast, but it's not personnel. Yeah, it's not. I, I so mean, we probably should. No, no, it's, it's, it's like a large conversation that maybe I want to get my head from, like we should have, but maybe well, I, I think it's the best I think it would be worth getting, because there's well, it's a meeting, I mean, getting everybody up to speed rather than being okay. sure. Yeah. sure. Yeah. When they, when they go into executive session, session I, I, I mean, I would think it would be, be going into, into executive session to discuss a, uh, a, uh, a student matter that, that uh, FERPA wouldn't let us discuss. Right. And uh, in, in, in the department matter, section. That are personnel matter. So, so, yeah. so we can add, um, if you want to add as a discussion item something um, to address the emails concerning drivers and vast. Yeah, it seems like just as a discussion. They're different, but kind of the same in terms mm -hmm. of what equity is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So or it's just to bring everyone to speed can we about say 8.3 what? drivers and vast. Um, that actually be 8.5. What do, what do we put in as 8.4? 8.3 is the student council, 8.4 is oh. the newsletter, newsletter. Um, and 8.5 would be um, uh, driver's ed. Yeah, 8.5. Is it would be one of them also? Driver's ed. Payments. Vast, slash vast. Right. Slash vast. <coughs> no, no. 
I'm sorry. Okay. Maybe I can have no, we a, were I can actually look at I can actually look at some of these. I do have some. Okay, so um, we've now completed our adjustments to the, our, our significance. Uh, we can move into public comment. Is there any public comment? Uh, if anyone comes in the door after this, we can certainly revisit that topic, but we'll move on now. Hey, before I can bring this up again, uh, is Todd on the agenda? Yes, he is. Where is that? Seth. Oh, okay, thank you. Presenter. Thank you. I didn't see presenter. Thank you. I just want to make sure I heard it. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I jumped to the, I actually just assumed that that was what he was there because I'm like, he's here. He's not here for fun. He's not a superintendent, principal, business manager, the one planet director. He's going to be the mentoring program. Correct. Uh, my first comment is that I wanted to congratulate the uh, and the great work that they did in the, uh, the book fair. I think it's really impressive that we used a, um, a local bookstore um, to do our book fair, and I think that's really impressive. And I think the work that went into it was, was commendable, and I wanted to thank everybody involved. Um, and I've just heard from Courtney, who obviously organized a lot of this from Donna, that it's going gangbusters. Just closed up, uh, yeah. like 50 minutes ago. Okay. The kids loved it. It was really cool to watch, and so much. She complimented how much better it was to use a local vendor as well versus a national distributor, yep. and just that it was really age-appropriate, kid-friendly, lots of variety yep. books. Cool. It was really impressive. I think Courtney put in a lot of work in uh, discussing the books, the, the list of yes. books you get, and I just Seems everybody's really well programming wow. was it's really it's wonderful. wonderful. Anybody thinks of it, I know she would appreciate the email. Just that, you know, thank you. She's also a full time student and full time worker, so it was just. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, you're right. Thank you. And maybe we can get a little card together. That's not a bad idea. I think the work was wonderful. Yeah, the stock for TTO. Um, they pay for one book for each of the stock yeah. groups. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, the the profit from the book fair offsets it, so it's not really a good cost. No. That's wonderful. Yeah. I think that's really great. And the, the community books that they sold, Donna gave you the number. It was like over $500. I got to oh, my God. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of selections. Good. That's very good. Oh, that's great. All right. Any other board comment? Uh, just, uh, just those. Uh, comment about uh, the, the show in the, in the, in the audience and just that, you know, this was a really great use of this space that we control and that I, I'm not sure final numbers, but something in the realm of 700 people, 800 people came to see the five shows. Um, a lot of comment, you know, a lot of uh, interest um, and just that this is a really viable use of this space. I really like to add to that because um, having worked the show for those seven weeks and being involved, being at Rochester High School, this is a gem for this community that we should somehow work through um, to see if it could be a viable place. I don't. I I really saw how how important this place could be. Um, for miles around, there's no auditorium like this, and I'm not sure, for example, that we should call it the Rochester High School Auditorium anymore. No, I don't Maybe think it's the Rochester Theater, or the Rochester Community Center, or, or Rochester Stockbridge. I'm not sure no, what we do, but I think we can utilize this space much more than we are. We can get perhaps money, make it a profitable thing, not just a detriment to the community. No, I, I mean. I, that, that ties back to this, just the whole general conversation of, you know, it'd be so much simpler if all the assets were in one physical building yeah. or yeah. the other building. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's a tough call because, you know, the, the you know, would the, would the students be better served to be in the building with the auditorium or the building with the gymnasium, yeah. basically? Not only the gymnasium, I, I walked in with, you know, they were building the sets. That woodworking room. Oh, it's, it's, it's a treasure. No, it's a really You know, great. what are we doing having that room empty when our kids could do... This is in the high school building, you mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, yeah right. It's all, I mean, why are we not using something like that? And I don't think you realize, and we've got to do something for 
fast. Because, I mean, I'm sitting in the music room and it's a windstorm outside. Oh, I look up and the ceiling tiles are flapping back and forth from the wind outside. You can't use the bathroom, as we discussed last time, for I'm every single bodily function. Right. So, I mean, it's something that we really well, need to look at. Because we could make it, it, we could turn. I think we're going to hear about the full assessment, right? Right. The, right.
October was the first time I saw them all together because everyone came here and they rose to pumpkin seeds in our outdoor classroom, all playing on the playground together, that hot cocoa together. It's really cool to see. And how many kids are you? Does it end up being approximately? 30? Yeah, so that's a good nice population. Roughly, it's a good yeah, population. It's a, nice population. Yeah. it's a great opportunity, especially with great getting together. Yeah, that's great. So it's really cool oh. to see. Are you mad? Can I yeah. That Wilder got an invitation from the friend that he met, Jody. <laughs> yes. Yeah, to be her, his birthday partner this last weekend. She's yeah. taking quite a liking to Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs>
to certain people from other schools in the SU came, so it was a great opportunity to work on building feedback together and how people do that. Um, all the teachers in both buildings have written two to three professional goals that they're going to work to achieve on this school year, um, and that is part of their supervision and evaluation process. Um, currently interviewing for an administrative assistant here. Started that process. And then I think the big thing on the back is um, Rochester Elementary School is going to do a shelter drill. And I don't, it's the 17th, really, is that right? Yeah. Uh, probably the Rochester shelter team, right? It's right. Not it's not really school oriented, it's like the town emergency okay. shelter drill. <laughs> But if you're um, planning on attending, you should let Bobby in. Yeah. So, more to see. Good report. Thank you. All right. Uh, does anyone else have any uh, questions, comments, or? Uh, no, thank you very much for your right. what you're doing. Thank you so much for your report. Um, Ginger, it's up to you. You're next. Hey, okay, we just had a new payroll person start on Monday. Um, ironically, on the same day, we in the office. Um, Liz O'Connor has been in HR for three years, I believe. Gave her resignation on Monday, so she'll be done November 23rd, and we're going to have the ball rolling to get an advertisement in place to get that filled. Um, I've been working with a with a consultant mentor that's been a business manager for over 30 years at other SUs, working on the FY20 budget. Um, I, we've sat down with Lindy and Bonnie to hash out a few numbers. Um, your budget is staggered about a month off from the schedule from everybody else's, just because you vote so much later. Um, that's all I have right now. So you provided us with um, uh, the financial report to date, right? I did. Or, um, that's through October 31st. Usually I would submit the early, but right. last month I was knocked out with the sickness. So. Okay. Um, can you tell me some of the big changes and some of the um, expenditures that we've had that are out, up way higher than the 33 or 35 percent we are through the school year? Um, just maybe as to how is that going to be a concern that we're going to be over budget in those areas, or was there specific things that were purchased? Or um, I'm looking at the physical education. It is. 66% through spent, spent already, and we're only 35% through the year. Um, and then in down, did, you don't have a specific. I don't have a specific for physical education. I can't really look into that. We are most definitely still learning our new software program, and it's very possible that maybe somebody's salary is quoted in the wrong area. But I will put that on my radar right now. Okay, yeah, there's that one. There's the um, uh, yeah, I just I picked out the ones that just were, there's the one that's 41%, which is the library, where it just was higher, and then, um, and then I had a question about the SU assessment, um, that is 53%. Or so like, that's actually built quarterly, and it's built in advance, so half of your SU assessment has already been built. Okay, half of it's been built, yes. even though we're only yes. a little more than a quarter away. So the next question is, the SU assessment number um, does correspond with, you know, our business office. I guess the, what didn't seem to be in there was this, the SPED and the transportation assessment. I didn't know if that showed up someplace. That also led is actually uh, farther at the top underneath the record. Okay, yeah, the special ed assessment right there, okay. And that's a 12%. We are building that on a monthly basis now. Okay. So, and then transportation, that's built on a monthly basis also. And where is that transportation? Oh, down here. So that <coughs> transportation in the, the support services is actually our SU assessment. That's the actual, yeah, that's the assessment build out. Okay, it just didn't have For assessment. Didn't have assessment next to it, so. <laughs> <laughs> just was looking for where all those, that, where all that money was. Um, okay, then my question with the revenues was, when do we bill for tuition? When do we expect to see the other revenues coming? Like, so far we've got no tuition revenue today. Okay, so those are billed by semester. So it's usually, usually billed out in like December for payment in January. And then later like April 
I have been the one that did it in the past. I can tell you that it's going to be done more like December this year because the budgets are taken. Okay. And then those are usually, um, and maybe we talked about this last time about how we receive those payments. If we, no, maybe that, maybe I'm. <coughs> So does getting the tuition money more towards December because you're building it later, is that going to affect our cash flow at all or are we still good? Yeah, we'll cash flow. Cool. And um, then your email had stated that we are probably not going to see the final numbers for FY18 until another month. So our auditors are coming back over here tomorrow actually to complete the SU audit. They came in and they audited all of the school districts but didn't have time to touch the SU. So they are here tomorrow. I'm going to try to nail down a timeline with him. But I can call the actual final audit. Not going to be there like January. That said, I think he's going to give adjusting entries way more in advance than that. Um, right. But I'll have more information once he's in the house tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, we've all done a preliminary audit and preliminary numbers that are not. Right. And that's really after the adjusting entries. Sorry, what was that? That would be after the adjusting entries are received. So they come in and evaluate the books and give us any adjusting entries that they see need to take right. place. And then they work on building the draft audit. And due to the change over last year, there probably was more and adjusting entries, entries than normal would be. Tell me what would adjusting entries, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, journal entries that would, you know, reclassify expenses that weren't coded correctly or certain certain transactions that didn't take place correctly. So the, the correction? Yes. They're basically correct. Yes, so absolutely. They're, they're not, as I understand it, adjusting an entry is not really adding a dollar or subtracting a dollar. It's putting a dollar in the right bucket. Is that, is that an accurate? That's the way I understand it. But you had also said last time that there were the, the there was, what was the SU assessment that we would, there were some entries that we could change. It was a special ed assessment, which we discussed with them when they were here in September. And we got that all finalized. That those numbers should be solid at this point. So if you were to print out a new one of our financial summaries for last year and have new numbers on it, then, then this one that was I actually new. think that you guys saw the update. This one is from the, the latest one that happened in June 20th, 2018. Yeah. Okay. If you want that you've seen the final numbers with the you know, with the final special ed numbers. We have one was it a month or two ago, but it wasn't final. You, it was said that we talked a lot about the about that particular number and how it, how that number might change. Yeah, I have a note here that I don't know said it was likely to change lower. It was provided on nine four eight uh, eighteen, so September fourth. Okay. But it still has the same date on the top of it um, as the okay. June 30th. I thought I could give you the second, the second draft of that, but I can just If you could, um, yeah. that would be great. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Is that 
that is who is that coming from? The it's state, state of Vermont. The state of Vermont. The state of Vermont. State of Vermont has to be new, replaced by July. Do they go to the new consolidated? Here's how. Here's the, here's the charter of accounts. So it's be, it's not final yet. But that is what they're doing, right? That's what they're, they're doing. They want to be universal state. across the entire state, which is what we thought we were working with when we put this in place okay. in May. Years ago, or last year, or in May, we received the final charter of accounts, and then they changed yet again on us. So um, it's the, the software, the coding, the fact that we had unsettled union agreements until the last week in June, and then had to put in play all of those changes retroactive for all of the buildings, the support staff, the teacher, everybody was sort of going different directions. It was a really, really rough summer. Health insurance. What's that? Health insurance. Health insurance. The data path fiasco. I'm not sure what you guys are up on, but it's no, yeah, no less. So if it's changing the health insurance, we making loans to anyone. Loan anyone? Haven't we had a loan anyone? Well, but a lot of the districts, a lot of the districts are, are for the teachers that have that have not gotten their medical insurance paid and have gone into collection. The districts around the state are are are. are Loaning them funds <coughs> to keep them out of. No, I didn't worry about our circumstance than that. Okay. Thankfully, but with the restructuring of the health insurance plans, we now have um, HRAs in place. And initially, we had a vendor that sort of worked as a third party in tracking, reconciling, and getting payments out for those. And that third party vendor quit, resigned. However, you want to put it. April-ish, yeah. and then it turned over to another company. And that company assumed the responsibility of, I would say, 80 to 90 percent of the entire state. So they're trying to figure out what the other company did and didn't do, and reconciling. It's been a big disaster across the entire state of Vermont. Yeah. Oh, you're going to plan to resign? Not resigning. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you think that? You know, maybe our staffing's a little shorter, but the, the majority of the stress has been from the perfect storm of the union contracts, the health insurance, you know, the, 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 the software changeover, um, the, 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 the leadership changeover, because you've been, you know, you're the third business manager in a year. That was a big part of it. Yeah, um, I guess. Okay. Have we, do you know if we have looked at the size of our business office staff, vis-a-vis -vis the number of students we serve, and compared it across the state, is our business, I mean, if you looked at comparable SUs to us, and this is probably not a question you can be, you know, that, that I expect to have an answer for, but it's a good question. I wonder if, if any, it'd be interesting, and I'm asking this more to you because Bruce isn't here for me to ask him to him, um, and I may forget by the time he shows up, but it'd be, it'd be interesting to see if our business office in terms of our staffing levels, is right sized to comparable SUs across uh, uh, across the state. I haven't done a formal evaluation, but I, on a monthly basis, I meet with business managers across right. the state of Vermont and sort of chat with my group that I'm sitting with for the day to find out what the structure is of their office. And I'm definitely finding that we have way more districts than most people, most most SUs, and about the same or less staff. So they, ostensibly, even a year out from now, there could be some ease <coughs> of this, that things are more settled. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because it's, it's been a concern of this ours is that this, this year is, is it, the business office has been a revolving door. Yeah. And that's a big concern of, should, should be of the executive committee, too. Right. And it's good. OK. And I, I certainly want to support you. I mean, it's not that we're trying to nail you, but I just, just, um, um, you know, we want this working. But it is a very valid, valid question that I could see someone in our school. I meeting. appreciate that it's no school because I definitely feel the choking in my office, and we're all, you know, we sort of feel like we just put the fires out each day and survive day to day, and it's not a proactive approach at all. Yeah. No. Well, and it, yeah, it, it makes it hard. <laughs> For the, the 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 planning part of your job to get done appropriately, it was frustrating last year when you know the the, the busing contract came back so much higher, 11 percent higher, 10 percent higher, or whatever it was. And when we asked, well, what would you know, would we 
we save money by going back to owning our own buses and employing our own drivers. And just the look of fear that went across Bruce and the business manager's <laughs> eye at the thought of trying to be able to, 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 to do that uh, analysis and put that together. But, you know, again, that was, you know, so that in, 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 a, in a better <coughs> circumstance, that should be something that, you know, that we, we should be able to expect from the office. So. Keep us posted. Well, absolutely. Temper, I think, of the, not just the facts and numbers, which is very important, obviously, but, you know, anyway, just so we know. Thank you. All right. Anything else? You <coughs> okay. You're free to make your escape or hang out and uh, <laughs> enjoy the rest of the meeting. Right. Don't lay down too much work. Um, <laughs> and that means that we're now in one class. So, Carrie. Yeah, Carrie. I did try to shave off um, a little bit. I think I might have cut it by $8,000 or something like that. Uh, but you can see the Rochester Stockbridge school year, district total, and then our combined summer program. Um, so on the back side of that page, you will find, or sorry, second page. Oh, it's up to that. Oh, perfect, actually. <laughs> there you go. Um, so that's our estimated revenue for 1920. Uh, and I've highlighted the, the school local funding. So the I think the thing you should know up front is we're not asking for anything more than what you contributed in the last you know, three, four, five years. I'm not sure how long that number's been in there. but. Um, we're asking essentially for the same amount. But um, what I wanted to explain is that I presented at the September uh, full board meeting about, so we're in the midst of writing the 2019 uh, And my goal was to fund uh, 8% of our overall budget. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, um, with local funding. So 8% of our overall budget, 74,000. And then I looked at two data points at each of our schools, um, uh, student hours, total student hours, and attendance, to figure a percentage to assign to each of the schools. So whatever percentage that school is assigned, they would pay um, that percent of 74,000. So if you look at, it's actually the last page, that pie chart. You can see what that contribution would be by school. I mean, um, but that would be in the school budget. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so the uh, percentage we came up with, or I came up with for Rochester was 7.5% and Stockbridge was 6%. So if you look at what that means in terms of the 74,000, that means the Rochester contribution would be $5,550, and the Stockbridge contribution would be $4,440. $4, um, but what I am encouraging you to consider is just maintaining your current contribution of 10,000 for Rochester and 9,300 for Stockbridge. Um, and my main argument for that is that the fees and subsidies that we collect in Stockbridge and Rochester, um, and actually all of our small schools, Chelsea and Newton also fall into this category, um, it doesn't meet the target percentage, which, sorry, I'm slipping you everywhere. If you go to the first pie chart, what I'm really trying to shoot for is about 40% of 
of our overall income and by site coming from fees and subsidies. So if you think about it, 50%, we can ask for up to 50% from the 21C grant. Um, ideally, we'd have around 40% coming from families or state subsidies. Um, and in Rochester and Stockbridge, we're in the high 20s right now, it's like 27% or something. So if you leave in your full contribution that you've got in there for this year, that's gonna, you're essentially could look at it as subsidizing the fees and subsidies. Um, and that would push you up to about 33% where you have a high free and reduced lunch rate and a high percentage of those families quali qualifying for subsidy because we get way more money for subsidy than we would charge a family. Um, and that's happening like in South Royalton. We get tons of subsidy income there because there, there's a high free and reduced lunch rate and lots of families qualify for subsidy. Um, the lowest income scenario is what we have in Rochester and Stockbridge, where we do have a high free reduced lunch rate, but not very many families qualified for subsidy. Um, well, you know, I was talking to Bonnie about this the other day. She's noticed it too. It's not her day family, but what we both think is that there's a more family than other people parent at home. So if there's a parent at home that's not covered, you can't walk um, I think, you know, there, these things go in waves, too, because I can tell you five years ago in South Wales, we were, like, really in the red. Um, parents weren't really paying the fees, and no one was applying for subsidy, and we really, you know, made a push, and it's like a whole cultural shift happened there, and now we just have kind of automatic, like families just apply for subsidy. And I, so I think there is some amount of, like, I mean, we, we've done a lot of educating. I've sent out a letter that I think really clearly outlines the benefits to the program and to the family for applying for subsidy. I think Rochester could have more. They do, Stockbridge actually does, I think, you know, for the popular, the number of kids, they have, you know, a, they, they currently have three kids on subsidy, and there's two more that are in the midst of applying, so that's not bad. Um, we have zero kids in Rochester on subsidy. Um, so that's one reason I think our fees and subsidies are low. The other thing to think about, because this is also the case with Newton and Chelsea, is the bigger your program, the more efficient it is. So Bethel might be twice the size of Rochester, that doesn't mean Rochester's budget is half of Bethel's budget. So we have a smaller population trying to meet that 40% on a higher budget. You see what I'm saying? So that's, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. It just means that we have less capacity. Those schools have less capacity to meet that 40%. Um, so, and it, it, it's not something that we're going to give up on. We'll continue to educate families about subsidy and um, the, family, the families are paying the fees. We don't have a hard time. You know, there's a family here and there that we will let attend for free because their kids really need to be there and we're not going to make, we don't want them to, to basically pull out. Um, but, uh, but the families otherwise are really, they are paying the fees, but they're paying the $4 a day fee and not applying for subsidy for one reason or another. Um, so subsidy is different from the free and reduced 
lunch. Um, yeah. And you're, you get money for that, though, right? There's um, <coughs> like a, 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 um, a parent or a child, is, they only pay $4 because they're not free to reduce lunch. Does this program get the balance of what um, is actually owed to them for the day from another source? No. Not unless they're on subsidy. Oh, really? So the only, the only money is subsidy. Is subsidy. Now, if you look at the, the second page, yeah. um, the revenue page, mm -hmm. so you've got the school contributions, the $10,000 is in the Rochester School Budget, mm -hmm. and the $9,300 is in the Stockton School Budget. And then below, on the second from the bottom, the town funding line is the 2920 that's in the Rochester Town Budget, mm -hmm. and the $5,000 that's in the Stockbridge Town Budget. So is that, I mean, number one, is though, or, I mean, one of the things that we hear, at least here in Stockbridge, is that there's kind of the, the there's the double dip. You know, we started out, you know, the, when the, the first time that the 21C program was run, here there was you know it was the, the first years were like what 100 percent whatever the coverage was the way that grant you know the yeah. decays right um <laughs> well you know it's like a decaying average it's a master i'm yeah. sorry the, the the drops the, yeah. the amount of drops um and then there was well let's add it in to the you know the, the, the feeling was let's, let's ask the towns for some money to, to, to contribute to this mm -hmm. and then we asked the school board for some money so one of the things that, that, that gets brought up is that there's kind of you know, you're, you're taking out of this you're taking some out of this pocket and some out of that pocket, and is that common across the the, the, the SU? Yeah, and I, are the percentages? Uh, they just don't uh, take it from two places: the school budget and the town budget. Yeah, Correct. Right. Okay, that's well, it looks like um, it, that there's twenty two thousand four hundred twenty dollars that is from all the towns in the district that is being contributed. Yeah. So if <laughs> I'm not sure where the 20, the Rochester 2920 came from. When I looked at um, this book, seven, I thought it was only a thousand, um, but still, so that's six thousand, eight thousand of that amount is, right. being, from, is us, from our district. Right. Right. I mean, you know, we're a small percentage of the group, so it's going to those ones. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, we can discuss and defend. It's normally um, the town itself. Normally wants to keep that separate because they want to earmark it for certain things, and um, I don't know about uh, Stockbridge has not given me very much um, uh, like direction in terms of what they want their funding for. But we have lots of towns that specifically for recreation, specific for fun. Um, that's the case in Rochester. They want it specifically for scholarships for summer. So, with the town funding, a lot of times, they... Yeah, I would look at the summer funding that we can Same thing, summer, summer camp, summer program. That's usually where we come in, in terms of the budget. I mean, usually, we're trying to bring it up, but I don't know. The town seem to like... What's that? Uh, that's what I was thinking of. I was thinking about half what... I went to all of the boards because we had schools that were paying nothing. Um, but we do have some programs that are newer than others, like Chelsea Newton, their new programs. They're only in their fourth year. But they're making a big jump from nothing to, you know, I don't know if it's been the two of them might be. Oh, yeah. There you go. Right there. So I wanted it to be a little more, reflect a little more. Um, even made across the school. Um, and then Chelsea and Newton, because their subsidies are low, we're using different strategies. We're increasing the fees there. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. In fact, I don't think the communities have the capacity to pay that higher. Um, if we didn't contribute the larger amount, then I think we'd have to make budget cuts. I don't know what that would be, but um, in, in our in the first page of this, yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, you, you obviously you're, you're estimated uh, roughly what your estimated revenue is going to be. So um, we'd have to get those to match up a little bit better. Um, it would, I mean, I would sure like to just to, to, to keep our, because we have one school budget now, we're a unified district. That's us. So it's less important <laughs> that, you know, the, uh, of the $19,300, the of your overall school. So a small school like Stockbridge and Rochester, you're going to have, you know, smaller numbers. But, um, you know, they, yeah, I mean, so far so good. We had a site visit last year, and they were really impressed with the programs. Um, I think we're always trying to get those numbers up a little bit in Rochester and Stockbridge. Um, I mean, I would love to see every single kid in these schools utilize this program. Um, so. Not there yet, that. We'll get back. Okay. No, I mean, we're coming back to the door. Oh, yeah, good. Good, good. good. No. Yeah, and we've had a lot of, I, it's just number stuff, but we've had a lot of fun events so far this year. And I was going to mention, if you do put together, like, um, a slideshow, I posted a video our kids did together during the rock camp. Um, it was a stop motion. It was a video highlighting the kids making stop motion videos. Um, it was really, really awesome. So, yeah, check it out. It's not on. I was trying to find it. It wasn't on the Stockbridge Facebook page. It was on the Unified District page. So I don't know if I can post things on Stockbridge's Facebook page, but probably not. But anyways, it would be cool then, but I don't know.
Yeah, that's great. I think uh, nothing Fred's going to make it back to that. But Alan might. Like. Cool. Well, thank you for inviting me. This is what they have over there. My name is Todd Benson, and I am a part time employee of Winter County Partners. Um, if you're not familiar with Winter County Partners, which I know from the years, it's uh, been around for about 45 years. It's a mentoring organization. We match up uh, children from Winter County with caring adults. It's a one on one relationship. It was started with kind of Big Brother, Big Sister in mind. But it has some uh, significant differences to Big Brother, Big Sister. Um, we started with children as young as seven, and uh, we will add kids to our program through middle school. Uh, but sometimes the kids stay with their mentor through high school, if that's fair. So we don't add high school to the program, but they can continue through high school. And we've had numbers of people do that. Um, so it's, it's a nonprofit organization. We, uh, we get referrals for children largely through the schools, which is one reason I wanted to come today. Um, thank you for supporting this, because it comes primarily from the guidance counselor. Um, very often, they will recognize uh, there's a child in the school that could use an adult in their life, and the guidance counselor will take trouble to uh, do kind of an assessment of the child, uh, seek out permission from the family, and then interact with us so that we have uh, authorization to proceed. Um, the, uh, as you can imagine, um, that is not the hard part of our work. Uh, there's a lot of kids that are in need of a mentor in these days. Um, the harder part is to find the adult. And Sorry, the like harder part is to adult. find the adult, gotcha. the, the, uh, the mentor. And um, for the first 44 years of its existence, Windsor County Partners was a one person operation uh, who did fundraising and did the matches and met with the guidance counselor and the families and so on. And uh, sometime in the last year or so, uh, the organization received some grant money to hire people like myself. So the county was divided into three tiers. Each tier now has a coordinator whose job it is, is to go out and talk about the program and try to do a better job of finding matches. Um, so you might be wondering, you know, what's the big deal about mentoring? Why bother with it? How does this affect things? Um, you know, I spent five years on the Newton board and I was very much aware of uh, the special ed needs of children. And, and I think that there's an overlap here. Um, statistically, uh, there are some stats on the sheets I handed out, um, which are probably more national in origin than regional. But kids who have a tend to attend school better. There's lower truancy rates. They're better prepared for school. There's higher graduation rates. Uh, there's a greater frequency of going on secondary education. Uh, there's a reduction in teen pregnancy. There's a reduction in the use of drugs, and in the use of alcohol, and in the uh, sort of dependence on violence to express themselves. So what they see is that through mentoring, children get stability in their lives, which allows them to mature into more productive, healthy adults. And as board members, that's, of course, what you're all about. That's what I was about, is helping to create a, a better society for everyone. Um, one thing we find is that although the child is the primary focus of the program, the child's family is also a big part of what we're trying to assist. Um, I can't go into lots and lots of detail about all the families, but <clears throat> very often it, the child's coming from maybe a single parent household, maybe uh, Maybe it's a married couple, and maybe they're both working, but they're, they're having a hard time. Or possibly the child's living in kinship care with a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle. That is more and more common these days. I'm sure you see that. Um, so uh, one example would be um, a single mom who has a chronic illness that requires periodic hospitalizations. She has two children. She works part time as best she can. Uh, she saw, she asked, she came to us and said, any chance that you could have a mentor for one of my, or both of my children, so that there's an adult who can take time with these kids, take them to the Montara Museum, take them to Vins, take them out into the countryside to go for a hike. Uh, so we've been able to, uh, to 
satisfy that, um, to find mentors for, for both of this person's children. And so uh, it gives her a sense of uh, sort of uh, extending her parenting beyond what she's physically capable of doing herself. Um, so in that sense, we see it as a benefit uh, to the family. Um, and then, as I said, we see it as a contribution to the schools and, and to the broader community. Uh, from that place forward. Uh, uh, so um, I'm not trying sure to go through a lot of things in a really short time. I am respectful of your time. Um, we, um, well, I should just clarify a couple things. First of all, Windsor County Partners has been the name of the organization for 45 years. That's about to change. And as a result, none of our promotion materials are very up to date. Uh, we have a website which is uh, a little funky, but if you want to learn more about it, you should, there's our website directory on the back. Um, I have a, an email address that's not listed here. I have two business cards left, so I can't really hand those out. But if you want to reach me directly, um, I can give you my email. Um, it would be uh, pals, P-A-L-S, north, at outlook.com, and that'll come to me. So, you know, my, one of my big jobs really is, is to try to find adults who are interested in this kind of involvement. As a mentor, um, we ask that the adult will spend six to eight hours per month with that child one-on-one -on -one time. That's all. It can be longer, you know. Um, we have a mentor uh, who took his mentee to Boston on more than one occasion. Took this, took this child down to the aquarium, went to the science museum. He, this mentor told me the story that they went to the science museum. When they were leaving, he asked his mentee, uh, what did he like the most, or what did he want to go back and look at? And he said, I want to go to that big room and ride the moving staircase. <laughs> because they had never seen an escalator before. And uh, so, you know, part of what we're looking for are for people who want to share their time with a young child and help that child broaden their opportunity, their awareness, their experience. The mentor is a, it's a role model. It's a reliable adult. And uh, a lot of statistics say that um, with children who have suffered childhood trauma, and there's a lot of brain science around that now, which is quite compelling, one of the things that can make a difference in whether that trauma is continued out through their life is whether they have one parent adult. That's right. And that adult can happen when they are you know, this age group. Um, so there, there's, there's lots of interesting reasons to get involved with this. Um, the mentors, um, yeah, obviously it's a, it's a big commitment on, on their part. Um, we ask that they commit to a 12 month period as a mentor with the possibility of renewing it annually if there's something that they want, if it's working out for them. Uh, I feel like 12 months is a, uh, less than that can do more harm than good for the child because it just reinforces that the world is an unstable place. Um, but more than that, it can put a burden on everybody. So it's a chance to reassess. And uh, currently, most of our, I just want to point out also that um, you probably have heard of things like Everybody Wins, which are school-based programs. There's I think Cambridge and Chelsea at Everybody Wins, and it's just Hartford. Uh, it's a program where adults come into the school for like about an hour a week to meet one-on-one -on -one with adults. Uh, we have a program like that in Springfield, and we're just starting one in Windsor. Uh, so we call those the, those are the, lunch -based pro the school-based programs. Most of our programs are called community-based, and these are the ones I'm talking about, where the, the mentor will, will go to the home of the, of the child, take them out, do something, and be something very simple, kick a soccer ball, then take them back home. And uh, other times, it can be a little more elaborate, and yes? <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I can't believe that I'm talking and extending this meeting, but... <laughs> from the time that his mentee was nine, and now he's, I think, 17. He's about to graduate from high school. This kid would not be graduating from high school 
no way unless he had this particular mentor. Um, this kid would call him if he had too much to drink, please come and pick me up. Where he wouldn't call his own family, he wouldn't call this man. And the mentor ended up, I mean, he would travel two and a half hours to see this kid play basketball someplace else in the state. It became an extremely close relationship. And, and what you said, I think you really need to look at this, guys, because it is, um, I follow this Dr. Robert Brooks, who's um, associated with Harvard, and he looked for patterns of poverty children, what allowed them to escape the culture of poverty? What was the pattern? Was it a good teacher? Was it ed education? And he found the one generalizable thing was just what you said. It was one caring adult. It could be a clergy person. It could be a teacher. It could be your next door neighbor. But it was one caring adult who taught this kid to be persistent and resilient and get through what they needed to get through. So I think it's a program that I'm sure many of our kids, and Lily, you should know, many of our kids mm -hmm. could use. Many of our kids. Well, I've seen that. I know who you're talking about as a former high school teacher. Yes. Yep. So valuable. I think um, I would be in commercial not that you have and I would hang them in Grand Park Park, Rochester. We should put them around town and maybe put it on social media. Because I do think there are people there that just don't know people don't know about, about the program. programs. We've got an increasing retiree population, which I think these yeah. are people with time in their hands. We can send them to the community survey. We actually, people did say they wanted to donate their time to, to help. <coughs> so I think it's just really putting those together. I really yeah. enjoy these. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. When is the new the new summer? I'm hoping it comes out in January. I'm not in charge of that. Uh, we have. Uh, Do you know what the new name is going to be? It's going to be called Windsor County Mentors or Windsor County Mentoring. I'm not sure. I think that the notion of partners was one of the original <coughs> concepts in that they wanted the mentor and the mentee to be equally invested. Uh, so they called it partners. But over time, people have got kind of a little bit ambiguous. It's in my friends were also their law firm. <laughs> so, uh, I'll put mentoring opportunities on top. <laughs> How many mentors and kids are you supporting at any given time? Well, right now we're in a little bit of a low. I think we're in the 20s for our <coughs> community-based uh, program. Uh, we found this. We've been over 1,400 since the organization was founded. Uh, one of the things that that we just be really honest about this. We do have a lot of referrals that we haven't been able to meet in the last yep. several years. And that's why they hired folks like me to go out and try to uh, facilitate this process. Um, and so one thing I've been doing is going around and talking to some of the guidance counselors and saying, look, we know we crop the ball. We can hard not to crop the ball. And um, so our goals are you know, pretty ambitious. And the school-based programs, uh, they're, they're, they're small, but those are easier ones to grow because the time commitment is much less. Right. Um, and, and so well, that's, I think, you know, if you, if you look at it as you bring someone in that, that maybe you say, well, okay, I understand that, you know, a couple hours a week may be hard, especially to, yeah. to, take, to take someone out of their home or, or do something on the weekends or whatever, but if you can swing by and do, you know, you activate them and then, they're, you know, I think actually what I think about it, you know, it, it could be a big thing for the school because, you know, some of them may go on and be able to be a community based right. uh, mentor, but some of them may also say, you know what, maybe I want to read at school or maybe I want to help out, you know, in, in the after school program or, 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 or open my farm or my studio to the, the summer program or something like that. So I think there's certainly a, a synergy between your organization and what we're trying to do. And I think it's, I think that's the kids really. So, aside from disseminating material, is there anything else you're looking for from us? Well, I'm just wondering, thanks for your support. I want you to know that you are supporting us through your guidance counselors. You know, you're spending, you are, you are funding some of our work, maybe in a minor way. But I definitely wanted to let you know, thank you for that. You know, uh, we really depend on it. Not all of our girls come from school, but a lot of them do. And so, as board members, you should know that you're contributing to this work through that. Secondarily, I want you all signed up to be mentors of course. <laughs> 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 with a yeah. seven-year-old yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I was thinking about that. Yeah, I know. Now that the play's ended, we <coughs> so much time. Well, that's, that's, that's great. So I appreciate you taking the time. Per month, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank Six to eight hours per month. But I'll just point out that I have, I have mentors. I don't know. We have mentors who travel. So, I'm going to Israel tomorrow.
She's not around. Yes. So we said, fine, send a postcard. So we're not expecting that every week throughout the year someone has to be here. But if you're not here, we'd like to find some way to stay connected. Stay connected, yeah. And, and the other thing I'll just mention quickly is that once the kids get to high school, we offer a slightly different structure because we know high school kids are too busy to meet every week. So we say, fine, meet once a month, but make sure that during the week you're in contact either through email or oh. calling, texting, some, sign of con some sort of contact. That's great. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, 8.1 career changes. Well, actually, let's jump back to 6.1. And Bruce can, can uh, you know, just the book I have done with
the more uh, the more useful it is Inside. as a selling point to build up support. Um, same thing with that visual approachable to members of the community. What are the specifics of that? How do you go about that? Um, returning every phone call I get. Okay. Uh, trying to return every email I get. I, I've been watching you with Kim yeah, Pratt. Very impressive. Oh, well, that's a whole other topic. Yeah, well, it's on the agenda. <laughs> Sometimes I do that when I visit the schools, other times it's in the office or, you know, phone conferences that I need to have. Um, you know, it's, this is a, a bear of an SU to try to cover, uh, and I'm not making excuses for that. I, I try to be as visible as I can be. Ginger just said that we have more districts than a lot of the other, other SUs. Really we're third in the state. Wow. We're second or third in the state. That doesn't mean we have more kids. Yeah. No. Uh, no. We're, we're spread so out, spread out. district-wise. Uh, I think we're, we're third. Uh, North Country's first, and then there's one south of us, and then us. I think which is central mm -hmm. is bigger than us. It's North Country and we're second. All right, any other questions for Bruce? <coughs> All right, uh, the career change assistance. It's that time of year where we as a board, and here's the question actually, Bruce. The previous contract oh, did not have a career change assistance program, did it? Can you define this term, please? Okay. Um, the career, so the Career Change Assistance Program, that's what I was about to do before I realized that it, it ties to our contract issues, um, is a program where we as a board can offer um, a, 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 a retirement incentive, basically. Um, I think it's 60% of their uh, highest salary um, over What happens is you have to have been a teacher here for 10 years, and the board offers a number of slots. And then is that set by the contract? The number of slots is set. The, the, the whole the, the whole procedure, the policy is set by the contract. But the number of slots is we could offer zero, we could offer 30. Um, it's up to us to decide. Yep. So we have to have it in the budget somewhere already. Well, no, no. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be going forward for retiring for next year. Oh, okay. The idea is, the so idea is, is, is that right. for, right. for a teacher's benefit, they might get to trigger retirement earlier and get it, you know, and, and get a uh, uh, incentive to move on because it's because the way it works is that so we offer two slots. Teachers apply for it. The two most senior teachers, you know, they offer two. The two teachers with the highest seniority, and it has to be over 10 years, would then get it. So the benefits to the to, to the teachers would be they get you know, an incentive to perhaps move on uh, if that's what they were thinking about. Um, to the students, it, it's you know a teacher that, a teacher that's, that's saying, okay, I'm really kind of marking time. It's perhaps not the best. You know, uh, for, for that group of kids that year, and then the benefit for the board is that in general, you know, you, you let go of a teacher that's, you know, a, an expensive teacher, and you know, you, you you have the opportunity to look at bringing in someone that's probably going to cost less, yeah. and is going to be, you know, young or not young, but enthused and looking for a position. You know, in, in, in general, the thinking and and. What usually happens is the administration makes a recommendation and says, you know, we think, you know, that, that it's something the board should think about. Sometimes it becomes a personnel matter that gets discussed in executive sessions. So um, but you know, it, 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 it needs to be 
the way the contract works, we have to tell them by December 1st. Um, if we're going to offer, we're gonna offer a position on December 1st. Right. And then they have till January 1st or January 15th for the, 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 the to, or January 1st, I think, to put it in. And then you know, the business office calculates it out and says, here's the people that are there. That are there. So you're saying specifically for this year, this program is only, if we decided tonight to offer it, we, we would have to approach the, the person by the end of December. No, no, no. We would, we would so say that idea. we will, we will offer one golden parachute or two golden parachutes. Okay, so we have until December to decide stuff. if we want right. to offer. If right. We and want the to the offer this, have this program out there for the upcoming year. It was, never, it was never in the Orange Windsor contract. It was always in the Windsor Northwest contract. Right. But the board can decide how many slots they might want to allocate because it's quite, going to cost financially. Right. In the end, probably you'll do better because right. you'll be bringing in some people that are younger and won't have. So we have to, first we have to find out if we actually have some candidates that are that fit. Well, you got very, have to, you got very uh, young in yeah. the last uh, couple. Well, of I was going to say.
this slot or that slot, and then Steph Colton or whoever at 10 years old. <laughs>
Yeah, I think we should reject it. Yes. Yeah, okay. Next. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. So we have to formally, we need well, to formally, there, formally uh, say no. Is there any additional information that, um, we, that we, you don't feel that we have that we would... The only thing I'll say to you is in the past, some of the teachers who have wanted to do it have come after the deadline. Right. And I don't think that's a good practice no. for any of us to no. do. It. I think I think once it, you know the that language is in the contract <laughs> about when they can apply, it's on them to do it in, within the confines of that timeline. And I would not. Uh, the, the, the only thing I, mean, I just feel like one thing we have people we haven't heard from yet is uh, our administration, and I feel yeah. really nervous about making an, any decision. For this or about this, without Melanie here for the Rochester uh, side, and Lindy, what's your? So I, I actually think, and I don't know the numbers, but our staff is very young in, in both buildings. Yeah. We both have done a lot of hiring together, separately. Things have changed, <coughs> like every. I think in both buildings, there's some really strong senior teachers that nobody would want to see go, but. Um, the thing about strong teachers is they know when their time is done, if that makes sense. Yes. When, <laughs> not in a bad way, but just in a like they've given everything they've had, they're successful teachers and they've been in it as long as they have been for a reason. Um, and I do, uh, can't believe I'm saying that. That's a lot of wisdom <laughs> from a young administrator. <laughs> Especially when you look at who some of our senior teachers are, and I have not heard rumors that it's on people's radars. Um, is that it is a nice something to take care of the people who've taken care of your community for a really long time. I don't know where it lies financially, um, and it's ultimately up to you. And I don't want anybody to go anywhere. <laughs> So that is what we could do tonight, is we could vote not to. Correct. Okay. Good. I would make a motion that we do not offer. A motion has been made to uh, for this board to not offer any positions for career change uh, assistance for the, the, the upcoming school year. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of not offering a career change uh, assistance slot uh, for the next year signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not. Uh, and boy, am I sure. Well, I think you should take it. As I said, I feel very different when making this condition. Right. The decision without the other administrator here. Right. I feel like this is, that's so much a part of this decision, and, and it feels a little strong in the sense of I would have rather, I, I feel like you would be something that you would have talked to the teachers about and then come to us and said, by the way. The, the teachers know the program and think that yeah. they would have. Well, that's, well and we're just, just alluded to it. It's only for one year. We're, we're this, yeah, it's right. only for one year. We're not, not cutting it forever. It, we're not right. cutting it forever. I think we just, with our budget, <laughs> and especially, yeah. is, yeah. we, don't, we don't even have the financials from where we landed last year to be able to go forward for next year. I'm a little concerned about the finances. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. It's a sensible thing. Yeah. Oh, we have no other thing. Oh, this is the the RFP. It's it's an engineering term. You'll have to say. Oh, you don't have to turn oh, no, that way. Right. <laughs> to offer the following request for proposal in order to assess the 
the existing conditions and code compliance of Rochester High School building. Um, and what that would include is it would seek architectural and engineering services to conduct a comprehensive existing condition assessment and code review of an existing school building. Um, the existing conditions assessment should include a review of all structural, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems. And the assessment should also include a review of accessibility, allowable occupancy level, egress, fire suppression systems, and overall code compliance. <coughs> so the question, and I think it kind of came up in an email chain, is, is before we finalize this RFP, um, do you want it to expand to all three buildings? I would. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Certainly at least the two Rochester buildings. Because that's what we're comparing. You know, because yeah, it's it's the I mean, part of the, the whole thing here is to say elementary building for the school for the right, school. So at least the two Rochester. Right. <coughs> and and I think it would it would just be a benefit for us to know where the this building yeah, is. Yeah, no, I think that's well. I, I think that's 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 fine. Yeah. The only thing I would say about that is if you know, if the cost of this becomes yeah. egregious, this would be yeah. the building that we would skip on. Do yeah. we have any speaking of ballpark ballpark numbers of what this might cost? No. I mean not even twenty thousand, fifty thousand, sixty thousand. I don't think they would until we see until I think everybody said how many buildings and okay. so, so it to be clarified. We, we make Facility fixes that have to happen that cause 
close to $100,000, whereas if we really knew every in and out right. of each building, then we could get ourselves to a point where we're really doing the right maintenance, the right right. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Just, just fix your property.
square footage. I mean, so it would be nice to have an outstanding so square footage that can do so you can kind of break down the top of the square footage. So, we, so we're saying yes to all four. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I think you should be No, yeah. but I think, I think, no, I think this is, I think we want all of this. I mean, if you want all of this, start with that. If it seems like, if it seems like what is unreasonable, I would rather ask for too much and have them say, yeah, we have to get some case that report will take us six months, $40,000, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we pare it down, rather than us saying, well, it's just after these three things, and then we go to six weeks from now.